touchscreens. At this point, most gamers know what they are. In fact, most people know what they are. Most people deal with them on a daily basis, and I don't know if you look at things in the black and white way of casual and hardcore gaming, but you may or may not play games on them. But you may not know the mechanics inside a touchscreen and what exactly is happening when you slingshot the bird at the pig or unleash a horde of skeletons on a giant. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today GameRanks asked the question, how do touchscreens work? How do touchscreens work, you ask? Well, you put your finger on it and it does the thing. <laughs> <clears throat> And that might be how you explain it to your grandmother when she asks what on earth she's supposed to do with her new phone. But obviously, there's more that goes on than just magic. Now we are gamers here at GameRanks, obviously, so there is some degree of magic. It's just that we're not talking about quote unquote real magic. There's actual technical stuff behind it. And there's a couple of different ways of doing a touchscreen. There's only two that are really implemented at any major scale. Most touchscreens on popular devices fall into either one of these two categories. And we're going to cover both of those, and we'll touch on another type of technology that you've probably seen, but really don't use at all in your regular everyday life. I know you're probably thinking exactly how can it be that different? What exactly could be the deal here? I mean, I'm putting my finger onto a screen and it responds to it. There can't be a lot of different technology that produces that result. And like I said, there's two major ways of doing it. Now, the Nintendo DS line of products has existed for quite a long time and has had a touchscreen for quite a while as well. But in using it, you know there's kind of some different stuff about it than there is with your smartphone. They just don't behave exactly the same. So why? Why is that? Well, for one, they're two fundamentally different technologies. On your Nintendo DS, or really any Nintendo product with a touchscreen, the type of technology employed is called a resistive touchscreen. To explain it the short way, it's pressure sensitive. And that seems pretty simple, right? But how is it pressure sensitive? Well, in order to explain it easily, let's look at a video game controller. You look at it and you see the familiar buttons, right? It uses buttons. Inside a button is a piece of conductive material that connects a circuit and tells the machine that you're pressing that button. A resistive touchscreen is like a large grid of clear controller buttons that are very small. If if that makes any sense. The plastic of a resistive touchscreen is flexible. Well, really all plastic is flexible, but it's a little bit more flexible in order to accommodate what has to happen. As you press down on a resistive touchscreen, the plastic flexes and pushes down on an invisible layer of conductive material that's lined up on a grid and essentially returns an analog X and Y value to your machine. Depending on where you've made the connection, it knows where you press the screen. This is actually a slightly cheaper way of doing it than what you see in smartphones. And I'm guessing that Nintendo specifically uses it to try and keep the cost of their gaming hardware down. Given the attention to detail and quality that comes in a Nintendo product, it generally isn't much of an issue. And it makes sense from a design perspective because most of their games aren't really touchscreen focused. The touchscreen tends to act as an augment to more traditional gaming ideas. For instance, in recent Legend of Zelda games, it usually handles the menu while you play the game pretty much like a Legend of Zelda game. I wanted to use Nintendo as the example of a resistive touchscreen on account that's kind of the easiest way to explain it. Pretty much all touchscreens that were in mass production prior to the smartphone also used resistive technology, but it's obviously much easier to explain it using something from gaming. Now, a smartphone is a completely different animal. Smartphones need to be able to do a lot more than just tell you where on a grid somebody pressed. And while a resistive touchscreen is more than capable of handling a swipe, there's a technology that does it much better. Smartphones use capacitive touchscreens. Now a capacitive touchscreen is entirely different. Where you generally make a resistive touchscreen out of plastic, a capacitive touchscreen essentially has to be made of glass. Now the reason for that is interesting. A capacitive touchscreen is entirely dependent on electromagnetic fields. Whoa, we get into Mass Effect stuff, maybe a little bit. 
Capacitive touchscreens are actually a really, really cool technology. I mean, not that a resistive touchscreen isn't. If you think about it, really any kind of touchscreen is an amazing technology, but what makes capacitive so neat is that it's essentially sensing the electric field around the screen, and when you touch the screen with your hand, being skin is filled with moisture and is conductive material, it distorts the field. And the technology that a capacitive touchscreen uses senses distortion in that field. Now, it's not just because you are conductive, it's also because you have your own minor electric field. Everything does. And that's how this gets so cool, is that it makes you think about that. Capacitive touchscreens are using a naturally occurring phenomenon and taking advantage of something that maybe you aren't even really aware of in order to dial numbers and make calls and input text and throw birds at pigs and waste all of your time on Clash Royale. Believe me, I know it's supposed to be a few minutes minute time waster, but holy crap, I get sucked into that. Being it uses an electromagnetic field, that's why plastic gloves don't work on a touchscreen, at least a capacitive one. Obviously, for a pressure-sensitive resistive touchscreen, it really doesn't matter what you use, which is probably the one advantage that resistive touch has over capacitive touch. But anyway, to capacitive, plastic essentially acts as an insulator. When you wear plastic gloves, you're restricting your own electromagnetic field, and you're also restricting any bit of distortion you might cause in another electric field. Now, obviously, you don't have a particularly strong electromagnetic field, as Magneto's powers are simply a dream for all of us. And this is why cloth, though not really an insulator in any way, at least when speaking about electromagnetic fields, also disrupts use of a capacitive touchscreen. It's just too thick for you to get your electromagnetic field intersecting with the devices. But that's also why they make smartphone gloves. Smartphone gloves actually have fibers of metal woven into the finger tips specifically to distort the electromagnetic field of the device, allowing them to be used, you know, on a touchscreen. As time moves on, you'll probably see less and less of resistive touchscreens and more capacitive. And I think that that even includes Nintendo hardware, because it really seems, and this may not be great because Star Fox didn't really work out that wonderfully, but they seem to really want to incorporate at very least a second screen. But with other games, obviously, touch has worked out very well, for instance, like I said, the menus in Legend of Zelda. We'll probably see more touchscreen based moves or perhaps puzzles or unlocks in various situations. And a capacitive would probably work out better for those types of situations. Now I did say to you there are other types of touchscreens and the most major of the other types is infrared. Now infrared is something you've probably seen before but didn't really realize. The way an infrared touchscreen work is by sending light across a surface, either using an LED or a laser, and a sensor or camera essentially watches the surface for any interruptions in that light. Obviously one uses Using a laser is going to be a little more accurate than one using an LED, but one way or another, these are generally not as accurate as either of the other two. But they are pretty durable and portable, and are often used for much larger scale installations. For instance, museums that have interactive exhibits, but I sincerely doubt you'll see an infrared touchscreen implemented in gaming any time in the near future, if ever. So now when you look down at your smartphone or Nintendo Wii U controller, should you miraculously have one, you'll say, oh, I get it. I understand what's going on here a little bit more. At least if you didn't know this stuff ahead of time. If you did, obviously this was eight minutes wasted. Haha. <laughs> but it was probably at very least entertaining, right? But you also have to remember there are a lot of people that don't know this stuff. And it's not stuff they're gonna get taught in school. But the more everyone knows, the better off everyone is. If there's anything I've learned about the internet, it's that people have opinions on everything. And that's why we're gonna ask you to meet us down in the comments and perhaps have a discussion about this. If you enjoyed if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, and if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week, and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero. As always, we thank you so much for watching this video, and we will see you again next time, right here on GameRanks.